electronic means as by order M192, and so we're all participating by phone. <clears throat> and if uh, my connection is lost during any portion of this meeting, we'll recess until it's restored. And uh, if council's connection is lost during the voting process, uh, we'll pause and uh, get that restored as well. Uh, council also uh, just make sure your video is enabled so we can maintain quorum. And it looks a little tight at the moment, so that would be great if you, uh, and if we don't uh, have videos on, I'll have to, you know, I will call roll call every once in a while or have the clerk do it just to make sure that quorum's being maintained. I uh, want to acknowledge, too, that we're on the unceded traditional territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Sable Tooth people and thank them for their generosity to all who live on these lands. And what can we say about our staff? They're awesome. Thanks a lot for all your work. And um, with that, we'll go for the roll call, please. Mayor Stewart is in the chair. Council Carr. Here. Council DeGenova. Present. Council Fry. Council Fry. Councillor Swanson. Here. Councillor Hardwick. Present. Councillor Weeb. Councillor Weeb. Councillor Boyle. Present. Councillor Dominato. Present. Uh, noted for Councillor Weeb. Councillor Bly is on a uh, leave, of, leave of absence for civic business. And Councillor Kubi Young. Present. You have quorum, Mayor Stewart. Thanks very much. Um, so the plan for the day is first we'll ask the public uh, to follow along on the city's website or YouTube link, and then uh, get updates on Twitter uh, at Van City Clerk is the handle. Any comments or items can be sent to council using the web form on the city's website, and that will be tweeted out on at Van City Clerk. Um, the plan for the day is to deal with unfinished business one report two and four and motion B1 and then a bit of new business at the end of the meeting. So the first item is the short-term actions to preserve and expand access to mental health resources and housing in Granby Woodlands. At the council meeting on September 15th, uh, council referred the following motion uh, to the Standing Committee on Finance and Services on September 16th in order to hear from speakers. Due to time constraints, the meeting reconvened on the 29th and again on the 30th. Uh, following hearing from speakers on the 30th, council referred debate and decision on the motion uh, to the council meeting on October 6th as unfinished business. Uh, however, due to time constraints on October 6th uh, meeting, this item was referred uh, to today. So, uh, council, are there any further questions to staff for unfinished business on item one? And just to note, this uh, motion was moved by Councillor Dijanova and seconded by Councillor Dominato. Uh, Councillor Swanson, I have you on the list for uh, for uh, questions to staff. Yeah, I was just hoping that staff could, I think they've said this before, but just for people who are listening, say what the city's plans for this site are and if they differ from the plans that are outlined in the motion. Uh, Mayor, I can jump in if that would be helpful. This is Saadi, the manager. Thanks very much. Go ahead. Okay, thanks. Yeah, the uh, I did say this the other day. Um, the plans are at this point to, um, through VAHA, to do an RFP to select a partner from the nonprofit sector that would work with us um, and BC Housing to establish housing on the site and um, that there is the opportunity to put a commercial um, or community center at the base of the building like we have done with the 411 Seniors Society on Fraser um, and that we would um, select partners through that process and um, it could be two different partners one for the drop-in could be a community center on the first floor and a different partner that did the housing or so but ultimately we would um, intend through VAHA to go through a selection process that's open and transparent and allow all nonprofits to make proposals to, par to partner with us on the development of those facilities. And does the RFP say how many of the housing units would be at shelter rate? Not normally, no. I mean, we what we typically do is we ask the partners to make proposals. You know, some partners come in with their own funding or unique approaches um, and so um, partners can 
um, make proposals for how they would deepen the affordability because of efficiencies or, or existing funding that they already have. They may be porting from another project or whatnot. So what that, is, that is one of the prime criteria that we, we would look through in evaluating the proposals is what level of affordability can they achieve? So um, I think the kettle has said that the 50 units would be at shelter rate. Um, is there any, do you have any idea of how long it would take to get the uh, city proposal with the R RFP up and running? How long between now and when the first tenant moves in? Well, a lot of that depends on the partner. Um, you know, we've, we've usually, it's a few years. I mean, we're um, with CLT. Um, I think some of you were at the ribbon cutting for some of their projects, the land trust projects a few, uh, recently. Uh, typically, it's a few years to, you know, got to design the buildings, get the funding, do the construction, that, that sort of thing. So it's, it's typically a few years at, at least. Uh, Councilor and Watson, I'm, I'm just going to stop your clock there for a second because I um, just, we're just checking with the clerk. I do think that We've actually moved and seconded this, and this is around for yes. debate and decision. Um, for the uh, parliamentary procedure, Mr. Moore. Yes, and so just one second, please, Councillor Dejanova. Thanks. I didn't so, want to interrupt. I was waiting. Thank you. Um, so, uh, so I believe so. This, of course, uh, Councillor Swanson, your questions will be allowed to the uh, city manager through a point of information. But just wanted to, to let you know that. Uh, so this. My understanding that this is a debate and decision. Uh, this was a private, this is a member's motion, so not a staff report. And so, uh, although the city manager will, will do his best to to uh, entertain your points of information, um, uh, you know, again, it's not a staff report, so uh, the information available to you will be limited. So with that in mind, uh, Councillor Swanson, I can restart your clock, uh, but this is the debate and decision period, not a, a round of questions to staff. And just a point of parliamentary procedure, Mr. Okay. Kind of what Councillor Swanson wants to do first, Councillor Swanson. So I, is that all clear? I have a point of information to staff. Okay, and I'll get to one second for uh, uh, Councillor Dejan. Nobody have a point of procedure. Thanks, uh, Mr. Mayor. I understand last time you were on a leave of, of absence for civic business uh, during this, and as other uh, members of council sometimes can be, including myself. Um, I had recalled us leaving off at actually an amendment and had understood that the clerk was going to uh, have a list of people who were in the amendment queue uh, because we were coming up to uh, a time where we had to end the meeting and it wasn't it wasn't going to be extended. So that was my understanding, okay. Mr. Mayor. I was check with the clerk. Was, Thank you. Can you remind me who was chairing at Council Region Nova? Um, I I know it wasn't this month, so it would have been the deputy mayor for September, perhaps. Was that Councillor Fry? I don't want to misspeak, okay. but I'm going to check with the clerk. I'm I'll check with the clerk, uh, Council. I'll be right back uh, just to make sure that we get everything in order here. So thanks. I'll be right back. Good afternoon. Thank you for calling into the teleconferencing line. The meeting will recommence momentarily. Please stand by. Thank you.
Okay, Council, just been having a conversation with the clerk. So uh, we, so the motion has been moved and seconded. Uh, there was some discussion of amendment, but it wasn't, um, it, it may have been discussed, but it definitely wasn't seconded. Uh, so I think just to- Point of, point of parliamentary I think procedure. Just let me finish, Councilor Dejanova. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is we're in debate and decision. I'm just going to uh, let this uh, continue with uh, people can ask points of information to the city manager. Point of and, privilege. Uh, Councillor Dejanova, if you'd kind of let me finish my uh, okay. explanations. Thank you. I'm going to privilege after. Thank you. Uh, and uh, so, so Councillor Swanson, you have two minutes left for, for debate and decision. Councillor Boyle, Councillor Dejanova, you're on the list to speak. Uh, Councillor Dejanova, your point of privilege. My point of privilege, Mr. Mayor, is that I don't have the tools in front of me, and I don't think that we should rewrite history uh, here. If we need a few minutes to roll back the tape, I'm happy to even do that, but we were in an amendment queue. The amendment was seconded, and there were a number of councillors on the list to speak to it. So I think it would be unfair and improper to go back and do this differently if that's where we were. And I know it was seconded. Okay, I'm just going from the clerk's records, and my discussions with the clerk don't show any record of that. And so it shouldn't be too hard my, to- My point uh, of privilege was, uh, could we have a few minutes to roll back the tape so that I could um, see where exactly we are in this, Mr. Mayor? No, I'm telling you where we are now. So we're going to just continue along. If you have, I believe it's your amendment. So if you can send that in to the, the clerk so we can, you have time- Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, it. Mr. Mayor. I had sent it in last time. I didn't come prepared to do that because I was told and I will find the tape and it will be on there that I didn't need to do that because we were already debating it. Councilor Dejanova, do you have the amendment I will on need a email? recess if you need, need me to do that. You don't have it on your email in front of you? That you can I don't have it, it in front of me. It okay. will take the clerks, minutes. the clerks now say they have a copy of it. So it's ready for you when you want to move it. And you have a point of procedure as well? The point of procedure was I, I'm not sure that we should be debating anything except where we were in the amendment. I'm just going by the, the clerk's record. We're okay. We haven't made any decisions on anything. We're still in the debate uh, debate period. So, okay. Could you please ask the clerk to circulate the amendment? I Council? can. Are, are you not in front of a computer? or? I am in front of a computer, Mr. Mayor, but I'm struggling to bring it up at the moment while I'm also... Um, trying to look back at my notes and find sure. out where we were I'll in the meeting. The clerk, Thank you. I'll get the clerk to send it to you, and then you can decide if you, you know, that's probably the best way, just in case there's something that's not correct with it. So if I can get the clerks uh, do that. And Councillor Swanson, uh, up to two minutes. Uh, you have two minutes left. Go ahead. Yes, another question to staff through you. Um, B of this motion directs staff to identify and allocate CHIP grants and or any other options and I'm wondering if staff have any idea how much city money would be required to uh, implement this kettle project. Um, yeah, uh, if I can, Mayor, I can jump in. Please do, yes. <clears throat> I know that there is a considerable financial gap in the proposal that kettle has put forward that requires I believe it's a grant of uh, $3 million to support the drop-in center. 
and then there would be additional funds required for the housing. I don't know what the CHIP grant requirement would be, but it would be really awkward for us to directly allocate grants on the floor of council. We do, from a transparency perspective and a fairness perspective, we we do allow all nonprofits to apply for grants directly through the program intake system, and they're evaluated based on a series of criteria, and it would be really contrary to, to, to council policy to allocate um, a grant on the floor council like this without them uh, being able to compete with other applicants. Okay, and that would be and the one, same for the housing as well. One last question is, could the Kettle apply for this RFP? Of course, yes. And if, okay. if they can indeed provide 50 shelter rate units, then they, they would be a competitive bidder. But that would be obviously, you know, we'd go through a, a, a set of criteria and they would, they would, we would need to compare them with other nonprofits and ultimately council would need to make a decision based on how they, how they compare to other nonprofits. Okay, thank you. Councillor Boyle, up to five minutes. This is debate and decision. Uh, yes, thanks. Um, so a number of the questions I also was going to ask Councillor Swanson asked, I appreciate that. I'll speak directly to the motion um, and I want to say a few key things. One is that I um, am very grateful for the work that the Kettle Society does for the services that they provide. I think they're an incredible resource in our city uh, and I'm, I'm very supportive of them. I also uh, live in this neighborhood um, and would love to see housing on that site uh, and um, I'm supportive of figuring out how we get there. I won't, however, be supporting this motion. Um, uh, as we heard in the answers to Councillor Swanson's questions from staff, um, I feel strongly that this isn't an appropriate way for council to be making grant decisions or uh, allocating large amounts of public funds um, in prioritizing one project or another without a fair and transparent RFP process. I think we owe that to um, all of the incredible uh, nonprofit housing providers and uh, operators across the city that we have a clear and transparent process and that we allow um, allow all of these potential partners to be part of it. And I would particularly be uncomfortable if this motion uh, ended up setting a precedent that certain projects could come to council and through a different approval process than the process uh, that has already been set up through staff. So um, while I would absolutely be happy if a project like the one described in this motion were able to be realized, uh, I think it is important for good governance that we, uh, that we make these kinds of decisions through the appropriate channel. Um, and that's all I'll say for now. Okay, thank you. Uh, we've got Councillor Dejanova. Thanks, I'll just start by saying, um, I'll wait until my timer starts. But um, I'm, I'm really troubled that we would leave off somewhere and not pick up where we left off. Um, but I did uh, just wanna ask the city manager because it's my understanding and what was sent to us uh, through Kettle um, that uh, BC Housing has made a commitment to them and has unequivocally committed those funds to their project and thus wouldn't commit them to another project. Have you had any conversations directly with BC Housing uh, about this and about getting that funding? Because I understand that right now we have shovel-ready units of, at, at uh, $375 a month uh, that are funded by BC Housing if the project were to move forward with the kettle. So that's a point of information to... That's a quick point of information, yes. I just, just yeah. yes or no if, if BC Housing has committed anything to the city in an RFP process. Is there anything you can tell us about that, uh, city manager? Yeah, through the mayor, um, I, I guess I'd say there's, I don't have a yes or no answer to your question. Okay. Um, thanks so much. Uh, I have an amendment. I suppose I'll be moving this again. I'm not Can't sure what the it. legal ramifications are when I go through the tape again, if we look at that, but, uh, but let's try and do it again. Mayor Stewart? Yes, uh, go ahead, uh, City Clerk. 
Um, I'm just looking at the notes going back to the previous meeting, and I am confirming that the amendment that was sent through um, by Council de Genova was indeed voted on, and it included the, the language that was struck, um, which is in the email that was just circulated to Council. So that particular amendment has been dealt with. Okay. So we're actually looking at an amend amending. Mm -hmm. So, so this language has been changed. I'm going to stop your clock, Councillor Deshnova. Thank you, Mr. So, Mayor. Okay. So, clerks, what you just sent around, and perhaps you can pull it up on the screen uh, for all of us to look at it once, is that this, this, the original motion with the strike through and the additional language is what uh, we're considering now. That's correct. Okay. Thanks. Um, okay. So again, apologies, Councillor Desanova. You were correct. I was wrong on that one. Um, and I guess it's uh, lots of meetings, but I hope you'll accept my apology for for that mistake. And I wonder if, you will, if you'll accept my apology for interrupting, Mr. Mayor. Of course. <laughs> I guess reason. So good. Thanks. Um, so with that in mind, um, you know, I think just just because of the confusion at the beginning, if uh, if those councillors who who have been uh, have spoken or asked questions, points of information, would like to go back in the queue. I mean, in a way, we can just have a reset on it on this uh, this whole thing. Um, bearing in mind that we're now discussing the motion that was um, the private members motion that has been amended. So um, so you're at the yes the. So uh, you're at the top of the list, Councillor Dejanova. If you want to, I'll reset your timer, and um, you have up to five minutes for debate and decision on this amended uh, motion. Sorry, thank you. I just wanted to to share that uh, I'm taking a deep breath and starting over. Uh, I I changed the wording to this and appreciated uh, you know Council's uh, consideration and support on that. Because I think it's important that we look to identify, and I was wrong to use the words that we allocate, because that comes to us with recommendations from staff, and we make decisions then. Uh, but I believe that the CHIP grants might be an option that are available among other options. And the CHIP grants were not something that, or I should say, the, house, the, the community housing initiative program grants were not something that was originally uh, there um, at the time that Kettle uh, was working towards, uh, you know, uh, their application, which was included in the uh, Grandview Woodlands Community Plan. As I've mentioned, it was m mentioned a number of times, uh, and and it really, it's a process part and respectful to staff in changing this as to how we look to find the funding. That being said, through CHIP grants, we now have given over $6 million to certain organizations. And even though it may not cover off the $3 million from here or there, which I think were really great questions by Councillor Swanson, uh, sometimes in a pro forma, you can ebb and flow. And if $3 million is offered somewhere else, that frees up $3 million uh, to go towards, um, you know, uh, other initiatives, be it a a CAC contribution or whatever it might be. I'm not sure what this project looks like. I haven't uh, been too prescriptive that it would be the project that came before. But what I do know from the letters that we've all received is that BC Housing has committed the funding, that the Kettle offers an essential service in the neighborhood, and we've heard from them. They might just not be able to continue to work on their space, and that an RFP process uh, just wouldn't work for them considering their needs, uh, but they understand that. I would hate to lose them from the community. And I think, you know, with some of the issues that we have so imminently in front of us, when I think of the mental health crisis and, um, or sorry, when I think of the overdose crisis, um, when I think of the people that the kettle serves uh, that have mental health challenges, uh, that may have addiction issues, that may be uh, homeless or uh, have had uh, issues with housing or are having those issues. Uh, and the fact that they offer a number of services, such as uh, the drop-in center that they're looking for, and the fact that they're not very far away from neighborhoods right now where we do see uh, people living 
in places that are inappropriate for them, such as Strathcona Park. And I don't want to spend too much time talking about that, but it hits home when we talk about shovel-ready projects and the fact that BC Housing has made a commitment. I appreciate the work that you do with BC Housing directly in your role, Mr. Mayor. Uh, and, and I think that this is a way that maybe we could look at some of the new options that are on the table to see moving forward with them, considering the very good point that $375 a month uh, is more affordable for some people who otherwise right now are living in inappropriate SRO rooms, and this would offer them a better standard of living and supportive housing. Also just want to note that the Kettle does a lot of other great work in the community. They have an ID program. I know they have a drop-in center where they also uh, serve meals and offer resources and connect people uh, in the community and do so in a way where they really become a part of the community, and I was so happy to see that. Uh, when the Grandview Woodland Citizens Assembly, you know, really rallied around the kettle. Um, and we saw that also in the Grandview Woodlands plan, as I've mentioned here in the motion. So for those reasons, uh, you know, this, is, this isn't this is going to solve uh, any one problem overnight, but I think it's a good way to contribute in moving forward to those shovel-ready projects, to providing more of that housing at those rates. Uh, as Councillor Swanson, thanks for asking the question, so I didn't have to. But uh, that question about with an RFP process, are we assured the units will be at 375? No, we're not. The Kettle has said uh, that they have an agreement with BC Housing already for this. So I do hope with this new language approved, uh, and thanks, it's been so long since we've been back here, uh, even I couldn't remember the amendment was passed. So I hope that uh, this will be a consideration and the Kettle will be able to move forward. If not, I understand they might not be able to stay where they are. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Councillor Carr, up to five minutes. Um, yes, uh, if I could just uh, ask a point of information through you, Mr. Mayor. Sure. Yeah, to, to staff. Um, and my question is really around the committed funding um, that, Kettle, that Kettle has um, indicated it has from BC Housing. Do we know if that is because um, of the previous uh, work that had been um, ongoing but did not end in any um, actual project um, between the city and a, and a private developer in the kettle or is this something new um, that they have that they are bringing to the table uh, do we have any in intelligence on this through the mayor I can jump in here um, I'm sharing basically just what I what I've heard is that um, kettle submitted a proposal to the CHF fund at BC housing um, and it's for 50 units, and uh, they wouldn't all be at shelter rates. Um, so I, I don't believe that 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 it is at shelter. I think some of them would be at shelter based on the proposal. Um, and my understanding is is that the, the project, in you know, a number of times, has been said that it's shovel ready. It's quite far from shovel ready. And my understanding is BC Housing has only made a preliminary approval, and it was based on the assumption that the city land would would be there and made available, which is obviously um, not the case at this point. Um, and the proposal with an, and submission were made kind of unbeknownst to the city at the time. Um, so funding from BC Housing is kind of part of the the old deal that that had been considered the that that larger proposal with the private developers. So it's kind of based on an old proposal at this point. Yes, thank yeah. you. And if um and if we were to proceed with the RFP process, there were and there were a number of applicants, would it be um, and we chose a different applicant, um, would it be feasible to imagine that BC Housing would um, be considering providing some funding towards the development of that site, towards the kind of housing um, that uh, uh, that, that we would like to see as a city, and, and would uh, the other applicants be, uh, uh, you know, pursuing uh, that same kind of arrangement with BC Housing in concert with the city? Uh, you, Mr. Mayor, I, through the mayor, yeah. yeah and generally speaking, most of the projects that we do through Vaha, where we dedicate city land, end up getting becoming a partnership with BC Housing. I, I think virtually every single one of them, because. Our general arrangement is the city contributes the land and BC Housing helps with the construction. There's two parts to this proposal. Um, one is the, the drop-in center, 
which is a $9 million project that, that Kettle would need to raise. It's a very, I'm not sure they've raised that. Uh, that's a very considerable amount to raise for a drop-in center. I think they've indicated that they would need a $3 million grant from the city to do that, and then a $6 million loan mortgage. And then on top of that, you'd need to do the housing. Um, there's another call for the CHF funding in January 2021. So if we're able to do the RFP and select a partner pretty quickly, we'll be able to pursue the CHF call in January for, for whoever the partner ends up being on the site. Yes, thank you. That's, that's useful information. Um, so uh, to my fellow councillors and mayor, um, I'm not going to support this. Uh, I'm not going to support it because I really, well, first of all, I just agree with the points that were raised by Councillor, uh, when was it, Councillor Boyle at the very beginning um, that, uh, that outlined the importance of a fair process. Uh, I want to see in the best interests of the citizens of this city uh, the um, the various applications that may come in through an open RFP process. There may be ones that are way better, and there may not be. And Kettle is free to apply. And it may be that Kettle's project is the best, and we can move forward. I don't imagine this is going to be a lengthy process, but I think it's extremely important um, to serve the people of the city to their best interests financially and in terms of the outcome of the kind of housing, the affordability of that housing, and the other types of community amenities that may go along with that project that we go through with the RFP process. Thanks so much. Uh, Councillor Kirby Young. Yeah, thank you. I'm hoping to ask some points of information, clarifying questions sure. um, for you to staff. Um, just to, thank you. Um, just to get some sort of facts clear, I, I know City Manager, you noted that um, it's important to have an open, transparent process, but the city has in the past allocated sites to nonprofits without an RFP process, hasn't it? Such as the ISS at Victoria and 11. In the past, there there was a kind of spotty approach to transparent um, partnership selection. Um, and since the new procurement policies were approved, I don't know, maybe six years ago, um, they've all gone through a, a competitive and transparent process. So there, there previously there weren't policies, and there are at this point. But we have done we have done specific projects when we've had partners in the past, right? Um, moving on, can I, just in terms of the numbers for the housing units, um, my understanding is that BC Housing allocated these funds is about, I think about December 2018, probably one of the first, I've got my back straight from all the different conversations I've had, um, for these units, um, which is almost two years ago now. And the, there was originally, there was a looking at the project, it was going to be 30 units, but it was actually increased by 20 to 50 units. So I'm wondering if that is correct, because that did involve an understanding some engagement with Baja. And then the second part of my question is, can we get verification? Because my understanding in conversations with um, folks involved with the project with housing is that those 50 units are at 100% shelter rate. Yeah, typically, um, all of this kind of information would be what we would be asking for during a transparent selection process. So at this point, it's all based on hearsay, and, and we don't have really much clarity on that. So we get some information from we get some information from BC Housing, we get other information from Kettle, and, and when we do a, a transparent selection process of a partner, they put all of that down, including the like, documentation of, of various commitments. Well, I, I was advised of this by Kettle and by BC Housing, so my suggestion that information is not correct, that the 50 units are at shelter rate? I'm just trying to get clear in sort of um, the facts here. What, what I've been told by our, by my staff, by our staff is, is that that some portion of the 50 units would be at shelter rate. Um, typically, as we've seen, BC Housing generally likes to see a mix of housing types. And so they generally would provide some at hills, some at below market and, and some at shelter, and they, they would create a mix in the project. So I don't know, I'm not sure where the, the gap in information is, but that's what I've been informed. Well, if the information um, appears to be disparate, um, between what's been conveyed to council and what I've received directly or been advised by the proponents, I'm wondering if we should not, 
we should be careful about statements they're not at shelter because my knowledge is that they're very clearly 100% at shelter. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I'm merely trying to answer questions. Yeah. I'm giving okay. the information that I was told no by, by my staff, so I'm not okay. intending to spread misinformation. I'm just trying to answer the questions based on what I'm hearing from the staff. Sure, and okay. I know you're at a and we're at a disadvantage here because it's a it's a private member's motion. I know the full staff team aren't on okay. it. Okay, fair, fair, fair enough. Maybe you can switch to um, just understanding a little bit about the finances on the city side, which I know you do have information on, and that $3 million payable to the city. Um, that's for the value of the land um, in terms of assessing it if it was rezoned. Is that correct? Um, well, typically, if we're going to talk about the la value of land, I'd recommend we go in camera like we do with every land um, valuation. We we have had the site appraised, but it's not something that I would recommend that we talk about in, in public at this point. Okay, but the notion of what the city is contributing is, you know, maybe I can ask the question this way. Um, at the moment, it, sort of factually, staying away from values is three family lots um, that currently have not been rezoned at this point. Is that correct? That's the status of the of the land and the land. D depending on how we pursue the sort of composition at this point. Depending on how we pursue the project, um, on many of these projects, the VAHA projects in particular, the VAHA staff do a lot of the the legwork. So in addition to to, to contributing uh, the, the the land, we would we would prepare the project um, for um, a project proponent to take it over. So there's generally a fair amount more that we're contributing than just the land. We're actually getting the, the development ready. We're at the we're at the five okay. minutes. That's my time for now. Thank you. Councillor Dominato at the five minutes, then we are in debate and decision. So uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. A couple of just points of information uh, quickly. Um, just one, um, could staff confirm that um, the Kettle Society is operating uh, the only um, ID bank in the city currently? I, I don't know that off the top of my head. Okay. Um, I believe it may be. I'm not sure, though. Um, uh, but um, I think they were identified and chosen as a partner of choice for that. Also, um, my understanding, I'm just looking for confirmation that uh, they're also the partner of choice for the uh, upcoming recovery cafe uh, that is done in partnership with Street to Home. Is that correct? Which is also going to be located in the city. It is groundbreaking. Um, I, I believe that's correct. Okay. And because the, the focus of the recovery cafe, my understanding is to support people in transitions, dealing with addictions and other services and, and building resiliency. Uh, and that that's slated to be coming into East Vancouver in the next year or two. Um, I'm just wondering, um, Mr. Mayor, uh, just for how much do I have for time for speaking to offer remarks? Uh, five minutes total, points of information okay. and debate and decision uh, or debate included in the five minutes. Okay, um, okay well, I'll, I'll make some comments right now. Um, a, a couple of reflections uh, around this. I think that one of the things that we heard from uh, our planning staff and housing staff a couple of months ago in the context of COVID was that COVID has brought a whole new context for housing and that um, the really showed the precarious nature of our housing system and that really we need to do a bit of a rethink. And what I took away from that conversation is that, you know, time is of the essence in many cases and often the conversation I think at Council has been around uh, the necessity and the need for social housing. And in fact, we just referred a significant uh, development project back uh, to staff uh, because we were looking to see if we could get more social housing at Oak Ridge. I, I think that, um, and one of the challenges I, I think and probably staff collectively feel, but also I think citizens feel is that it takes far too long to get social housing in place. And it's often um, because of having, needing to have all the right pieces in place. And we saw that at Beach as well is um, that sat you know, vacant and empty and, and ultimately it went strata to pay for the social housing component. And so it's often that you need all the right pieces in place. You need to have um, the capital funding, you need to have the um, operating funding, you need to have the different partnerships. And I think uh, for me, I'm gonna to speak to the partnership component of this and, and that we know we can't develop, really deliver these projects without um, partnerships. Um, 
and this is in my mind a partnership project and it's a ready project because you have the nonprofit, which is uh, a deemed a partner of choice across the city with a spectacular reputation, um, but they're bringing not only a, a financial contributions from existing land, uh, but also um, community services, which Councillor Di Genova has already spoken to at, at length. Um, you've got BC Housing at the table uh, with uh, operating funding, and I do now have confirmation that it is shelter rate at $375, uh, and it is for 50 units, and it is specific to this project, and that was confirmed uh, in a, a couple of minutes ago for me. Um, and, and, and I think that is critically important. Um, you've got the development partner, you've got land, um, the Kettle, I understand, is able to get a loan uh, through BC Housing to, to fund some of the capital. Um, so to me, all the, the elements are there. And, and so you have essentially a near shovel-ready project. And um, we have to, I think it's constantly look at uh, what are the outcomes we're trying to achieve. While we have, um, you know, targets set out in our, our housing strategy, um, and we have regulatory frameworks to manage these things. Uh, we also have to keep in mind outcomes. And, and we've had, uh, I don't know how many conversations recently about people who are precariously housed or unhoused and, and on our streets. And this housing was dedicated to be focused on people with mental illness and support. So we know that is scarce in the city. And uh, and, and so I, I personally think that we need to be moving ahead with this and supporting this motion as it's presented today. Uh, because there is urgency, and um, I don't want to see um, uh, something that is basically being handed to us in a way that um, delivers that much needed housing uh, to see that delayed and to not see that go ahead. Uh, because we are talking about, we just talked about an SRO strategy, a $1 billion. Um, um, you know, again, we're years away from um, redevelopment or renovating or meeting some of our SROs. And so here's an opportunity to do it right and to keep the services in the community, because that is the risk, is that we lose all of these community services, the community center, all the, uh, um, the ancillary that. services that are there. Um, and so I think that is a big risk to be considered here. Um, okay, we're, we're just over the five year. Okay, thanks, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thanks. Um, Council, I just put myself on the list for, for a point of information, uh, so if I could turn the chair over to Councillor Boyle and I can, uh, for the chair. Uh, yes, absolutely. Go ahead with your point of information, Mayor Stewart. Thanks. Uh, so to the city manager, I kind of see this motion as a, um, I, you know, I, I, I like the RFP approach that staff are, are, uh, are talking about, but I see this um, worthwhile motion by Councillor Dejanova as kind of giving Kettle uh, one last shot at it before we go out to RFP. So I, but I'm very concerned about delay. Um, so if, if this motion passed today and it is the kind of one last shot to, to, to get this kettle, this, this current version of this uh, project moving, any thoughts on like the amount of time that would take, or if we could set some kind of deadline saying, you know, if you, if you go and talk, you know, you talk to them for a week or two and say, is there anything we can do to work this out? And then, and if, if nothing can happen, then it goes to an RFP. Is there, is there any thought is about how long that might take staff to do? I think it's um, through the chair, um, much longer than a two week process at this point. Like we really need to, at this point, um, the, the staff proposal um, includes more units on the site than the kettle proposal. So we, if we go with the kettle proposal, we're losing 50 units on the site. Um, and so we would really want to have the time to work through the project proponent, whoever it ends up being, to maximize the number of units on the site, as well as the affordability. Um, so, and it's my understanding that, that kettle would need to come up with, with the, the $9 million for the drop-in center, as well as to go through whatever the chip Grant application processes. So I don't, I don't think it's a couple of weeks to to have a a serious look at the, the the proposal that they're making and to try to come up with the funding um, that's needed from from various partners, including the chip funding um, that that is mentioned here. And just another uh, point of information, uh, Chair, if you will. Um, I'm just uh, I'm wondering how long. Had staff been working on this proposal with Kettle? 
how much time has already been put into this? Uh, any rough date well, when it started? Um, there was an original framework that included a, a, a private developer, and we we spent a couple of years on that. Right. And then we spent the last couple of years trying to pull together this proposal with Kettle. Yeah. And ultimately determined that we just can't quite we can't quite figure out like really how much money is needed and how much is being brought to the table and the viability of the project and and ultimately can't compare it to what other nonprofits might be able to bring forward. So it's it's definitely been a couple of years of of trying to see um what what's what's doable and ultimately you know the the um the thought of losing the 50 units is is really a considerable concern to us we want to maximize the the number of units on the site as well as the affordability of those units and so you know ultimately we we'd like to um be able to move it forward as soon as possible we've we've also got the question of ownership um, Kettle has, has been really, really adamant to owning the, the, in the entire project, and so we'd want to be able to, through a procurement process and selecting a partner, be able to understand what other partners are prepared to do. So there's a number of things that have kind of been holding us up and being able to kind of conclude the, the discussions. Okay, thanks very much for that. And uh, just in terms of my adding to the debate here, because I, I was really torn, I, I did I really support Councillor Dejanova bring this forward because I, I do think this is something that, that we really needed to discuss and get a handle on. Um, I, I was, you know, kind of torn either way, but, but I do think due to the amount of time that's been put into this already and the possibility of perhaps getting more units that uh, I, I won't be supporting this uh, this uh, motion and uh, would encourage staff if, if, it, if it does uh, not pass to uh, to get on with the RFP process as soon as possible and to really make sure that that kettle is uh, welcome to to uh, to apply. So um, that's all I have to say. And Councillor Boyle, if I'm happy to take the chair back. Happy to pass it back to you, Mayor okay. Stewart. Thanks very much. Uh, over to you, Councillor Boyle, for five minutes. Thanks, and I'll be very brief, but just wanted to reiterate, because I've heard a number of councillors speak about the very important work that the Kettle does, um, that I wanted to be very clear that I hope that this motion isn't interpreted as um, support or not support for the good work that they do, um, because I think that council uh, all understand the importance of the um, of the services that they provide in our city. Um, and uh, again, just want to reiterate that if this is the project that comes uh, out through that RFP process, um, I would be delighted to have it in the neighborhood. Um, and I, again, think it's really important that we stick with proper processes, particularly hearing that this procurement process, this uh, transparent procurement process that we have in place now hasn't always been the case and has been an improvement upon perhaps some um, uh, less transparent processes in the past. I think it matters that we uh, commit to it. Um, and th that's certainly my, uh, my practice is to make sure we're improving processes in an ongoing way and then sticking with the improvements. So again, um, I'm really glad that Kettle exists and uh, and provides the services that they do and look forward to the project that can come about on this land, um, which we've just heard could likely, uh, would not be happening on any different uh, time frame through the RFP process than through what's before us. So I, I won't be supporting the motion, but grateful for Kettle. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Kirby Young, you're on the queue, but you have used your five minutes. Councillor Kirby Young? You're on mute, I think. Sorry, Mr. Mayor, I have a double mute. Um, I confirm with the clerk that I believe we um, do have time uh, separately. No, nope. I, I read the note. To speak separate from, I know you said that, but I'm just asking a point of procedure to clarify. I understood that points of information did not count in our time to be able to speak to the main motion. No, actually, uh, if you read, I, I did see the note that was uh, 
responded in points of information time is uh, the clerk's note said, yes, I can confirm that you need to be on the queue to ask for points of information, which is part of your speaking time. So we haven't followed that practice. Previously. Oh, we have, believe me, <laughs> I, I, I follow it religiously as do the other chairs. I didn't at the very beginning of when I started chairing in 2018, but uh, but it has been a practice now for almost two years. So. Um, so we'll move on to uh, Councillor Swanson. Yeah, uh, I'm really torn on this. Um, the good thing about the Kettle Project is A, they're a great group. They run a building in my neighborhood that's a great building. It's, it's situated right smack between a children's playground and a old age home and it's perfect, no problems in the neighborhood and it's supportive housing is great. Um, and I like the idea of 50 shelter rate units. I'm worried that with our RFP, even though there's more units, that it'll be fewer shelter rate units. And it's the shelter rate units that we're in desperate, desperate need of. And I'm worried about the speed of our bureaucracy. Will it take really long? On the other side, I do think the process points are important. And B is troubling to me because it's basically seems like an open ended that the city has will have to grant open ended funding to make up any kind of needs of this project. And we don't know how much that will be. Um, so yeah, it's a it's a hard call for me. That's it. Okay, thank you, Councillor Swanson. Councillor Desjardins, you I just have four seconds left. I just Although wanted to say that I'll be supporting this. Okay. Thanks, I don't have any more time left, but I'm sorry to see that, that, that have, the kettle uh, won't be able to move forward in this capacity, so thank you. Oh, do I have more time, Mr. Mayor, if I move the motion? Pull, you do have time to close because oh. it is your motion. Oh, okay, time. thank you. Sorry, I'll go back on the queue then. Okay, sure, I'll move on to Councillor Hardwick. You have up to five minutes. Uh, Mayor? Yes, go ahead. Uh, uh, sorry to interject, but sure. just um, because there was some back and forth on the 50 units and whether they were a shelter rate, our staff did email BC Housing and um, I sent the response from BC Housing to you. So it should be in your inbox. And I, I okay. again, apologize for interjecting, but just given the amount of back and forth on that issue, I wanted to send you exactly what they said to us okay. five minutes okay. ago. Sure, I'll just bring that to your attention, Council. Councillor Hardwick, go ahead, up to five minutes. Yes, I will be supporting this motion and I do support the kettle. I have an overarching concern, notwithstanding new procurement and RFP uh, processes, that the historical relationship with this organization and the community is being um, sort of put aside. And that's my, my feeling about it. I, um, I'm really disappointed to hear that we're going down this road after everything that the kettle has done um, and so I just wanted to vote, you know, say that I support the kettle. I support this motion. I'll leave it at that. Okay, thank you, uh, Councillor Carr. Yes, I just you want a public. I know, just wanted on public record, um, the BC Housing statement can confirm it as allocated 50 units called a kettle. We will expect they will work within the funding requirements of the program. However, if they would like to put in a request to increase the number of income assistance units from the 20% program requirement, we are open to that discussion. Thank you. Councillor Dejanova, uh, you have your full five. So go ahead. Thanks so much. Um, yes, I'm so glad to see that it was confirmed as 50 units from BC Housing, and it's my understanding that from the letters that Council will see that came through to us uh, from the Kettle that their ownership of the current land that they have, along with the BC Housing funding, the loan that they would get from the drop-in center would allow them to, although they have the funding for these units, to operate these units um, at shelter rates. That's my understanding. I'm not going to speak for Kettle, but that is what I've heard mm -hmm. from them. And, uh, you know, again, I, I think that right now what we have in front of us is farther ahead. I would see this come forward uh, more quickly. And also, you know, I don't want to speak to Kettle and uh, or I don't want to speak uh, for the Kettle. 
and I will not speak for the kettle, but my understanding of this is that they might not be able to make it um, work, that uh, likely the RFP and what would be offered may not work for them. And I, I wouldn't want to lose that asset in the community. So I understand that this is a tough issue, and I respect others uh, not being able to support it. I'd hoped uh, there would be support for it because I, I had thought, you know, this definitely is uh, the option that will come on uh, online the quickest, but at least this confirms that BC Housing has still, as of today, committed that funding. So to the city manager's point as to whether or not that funding was still there or not, now we know it's there and it's there to Councillor Kirby Young's point for 50 units. So I think that that's really important. I just wanted to note that as well. And for that reason, and the reason that they do offer integral services in our city, um, I had mentioned it uh, briefly, but Councillor Dominata really uh, hit home in talking about the ID bank. Uh, some of the other uh, services that they provide that I've had the opportunity when touring the kettle uh, before and, and understanding what they do in the community is the, not only the drop-in services, the meal services, the connecting people to housing. And it's really a hub uh, in the community uh, and just a stone's throw uh, from the downtown east side where we badly need housing. So for that reason, I will support this. Uh, understand that we have other processes too. And just saw this as maybe a way that we had a new type of program, the CHIP program. I just saw it used and utilized uh, with other organizations that received up to $6 million. And I voted for that because I feel that, you know, we should try and do what we can to provide as much supportive housing as possible. So for that reason, I will be supporting it. I wanted to be on record saying that and that I'm very concerned that the kettle will not be able to stay in the community. And I know that that was a concern that they'd shared with me uh, in conversations had uh, this year. And for that reason, I will continue to support this, but I thank council for supporting the amendment. Um, I think that it's important to correct that process. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Councillor Fry, up to five minutes. Yeah, thanks, Mayor, and, and sorry, Councillor DiGenova, for coming in after your closing. I just, uh, I'm wondering a point of information through you to the city manager, Mayor. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm having a little disconnect from uh, Councillor DiGenova's description of the letter from BC Housing. My understanding is that only 20, per their letter, only 20% of those 50 units would be at shelter currently. Is that correct? Hey, city manager. Uh, that's the staff interpretation of that, um, and that's that's been my understanding as well. Okay. Yeah. So it, it, there's a bit of a, uh, it was sounding a little confusing at, from what Councillor DiGenova was suggesting. Thank you for that, city manager. I totally support the work that the Kettle does. I think they're a great organization. I know they do some fantastic work. I think some of the discrepancies around some of the facts and some of the pieces in this and the, the process by which we're approaching this doesn't make me very comfortable. I, I want to go on record as supporting the kettle, but I also want to go on record as supporting our staff and, and the RFP process that we go through. And, you know, we've, we've, we constantly come to these kind of issues just yesterday, in fact, talking about process and what's the appropriate process. And I think we need to sort of stick to process here. So I, I won't be able to support this, uh, this motion, but I do totally support the kettle. And I hope that that our staff uh, take the words that this council have given in support of the work Kettle does and take that into consideration as we work through any kind of RFP process that might prioritize recognizing the work that Kettle's already doing and the, 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 the fact that Kettle are embedded in the neighborhood and are doing some fantastic work on the drive, that they would be a logical fit for any uh, fit. And I hope that that weights in their favor in a, in a fair and transparent RFP process to come. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Councillor DeGenova, you do have about one and yeah. a half minutes left. I just I just wanted to um, note that I had said specifically and in the email it quotes BC Housing can confirm that it has allocated 50 units under a community housing fund called to Kettle. So those 50 units are still allocated as of today. Um, the 20%, yes, that's given, but the fact is, as I had mentioned, and if anyone else has any questions about it, I'm not saying that BC Housing is funding 
the rest that would get it down to the 375. What I'm saying is Kettle owns that land, and thus, from my experience working in the non-market housing world, can leverage that to provide on-site with other density and the loan that they're getting for the mental health uh, or for their drop-in center for mental health. Uh, they could leverage that to make it $375 a unit, which is what I understood, as Councillor Kirby Young said, that was going to happen. So BC Housing has allocated 50 units as of today. That's what we know to 20%. And the Kettle has sent their letter to us that they are coming up with a lot of that. The gap for them was the three million in funding. So I just wanted to be very clear about that. I'm not confused. I'm sorry if um, I confuse others, um, but that I just wanted to make sure the facts were on record there. And just wanted to say I wholeheartedly support the Kettle and I will be heartbroken to see them go from the neighborhood if they're not able to stay. Thank you. Thank you, you Councillor Dejanova. That's the full uh, five minutes. So, uh, Council, I can move us to a vote now. Okay, Council, that has that has uh, failed, and the clerk can put the uh, vote up on the screen. Councillor Boyle, Weeb, Swanson, Fry, Carr, and myself in opposition. Okay. Okay, great. So, uh, Council, now we're on to reports. Uh, due to time constraints of the October 6th meeting, uh, this item was referred to the reconvened Council meeting of uh, today and that is the 2020 Animal Welfare Grant. Uh, the, we held this because the there was a registered speaker, but the speaker has now withdrawn. Just wondering if there are any uh, questions to uh, staff about this report. Uh, please put yourself on the question list. And I don't see anybody in the queue, so if someone would like to move the motion, we could go ahead. Move, for Second, Thank you. East Genova. Thank you. Uh, if there's any discussion, uh, please put yourself on the list. I don't see anybody on the list, so uh, we'll just I'll trigger the uh, the vote. Ask the clerks to trigger the vote on this one. Councillor Dejanova. Thanks, uh, clerks. You can flash that one up there. That's passed uh, unanimously. Thank you very much, uh, Council. We're on the Downtown East Side Plan Im Implementation Grant Allocation. Uh, due to time constraints on October 6th, this item was referred to the uh, today's uh, Council meeting. We have uh, two registered speakers, and so perhaps the clerk can... Uh, um, sorry, I don't have the list in front of me, clerks, in terms of the speakers. Point of order. Uh, yes, go ahead, uh, Councillor Fry. Yeah, at the pre that's Councillor Weeb. At the Weeb, I don't know yeah, my voice sounds a little bit deeper right now. Yeah. Um, I, at the former meeting we had, I declared um, a conflict of interest on this one because I have a business mm -hmm. that's in the Gastown BIA that's receiving some of the funding, as well as the improvements. I have we have closed the business temporarily due to COVID regulations, um, but abundance of caution, I will continue to not participate okay. in today's vote. Okay, thanks very much. And uh, we can, uh, you know, if you leave the meeting now, we can call you back after this item is finished. Uh, clerks, do we have the uh, speaker? Yes, we have Speaker Chu on the line now. Okay, great. Um, please go ahead, Speaker. You have up to uh, five minutes. City Clerk, can you hear me? Hello? Hello, is this can you American hear me? King? Is this the... Uh, Mayor, can you hear me? I can hear you. Great. Can you hear I'm us? sorry. Thank you. Yes, I can. This is Theo Lamb, the Executive Director of the Strathcona Business Improvement Association. I, I am oh, a resident yeah. of Vancouver, speaker number two. Thank you. Um, I also have a four-year-old with me, folks, so bear with me if there's a little bit of background <laughs> noise. Um, hi, look, thanks for um, allowing speakers on this item. It's not an item I had expected to be speaking on. 
Uh, and I, I just want to open by saying I have the greatest respect for the staff team responsible for making these granting recommendations. We have been the recipients of a grant before. These are tough decisions, all with trade-offs. And Tom Wanklin, if you're whistling, I'm uh, listening rather, I'm talking about you. Thank you for all your work on this. And uh, the grant requested by the Strathcona BIA specifically listed in your report was declined. And I wanna share with you why I believe that the decision to decline funding for this specific project is fundamentally not the right call. And that you as council have the power to recognize a program and a project that is making significant community impact and frankly defining new ways of working between both the city and community. You have the power to reverse this decision and I'm asking you to consider it. Let me give you just a little context. Last week, city staff presented a three-year summary implementation update on the downtown east side plan. You'll recall it's that um, in that update, staff specifically referenced this project. And I'll just read to you briefly the reference now as it perfectly summarizes what the project is. They wrote, funding through the downtown east side capital grants is currently allocated to support a program led by the Strathcona BIA that promotes tenancies in vacant storefronts in Chinese society buildings. And a, lo a lot of councils actually heard of this program. The goal is to secure and repurpose underutilized commercial spaces for affordable. I'm sorry. Sorry, I, I do hear somebody else on the line. If councilors could all make sure, or staff could all make sure you're muted so we can uh, hear the speaker, that would be great. Uh, please continue, Ms. Lamb. Thank you. I, I'll, I'll continue with the reference. The goal is to secure and repurpose underutilized commercial spaces for affordable community serving retail. Now in 2019, the project successfully retained a space for the family owned Cam Wai Dim Sum of the Ch uh, Kong Chow Society Building. In the next phase will explore the support for two new initiatives in the Strathcona and Chinatown BIA catchment areas. Now that's the end of the reference from the report. This grant would be allocated towards one of those two new initiatives. Council, we've got momentum moving forward. Cam Y, that original site and project, is on the precipice of breaking ground on their new renovation for their new community serving retail site. And that is thanks to initial um, funding and tons of partnership and support from so many different sources across the city. And now two new sites have been identified in Chinatown and Strathcona. And we need this funding to continue it. So doing this kind of community work, we're working across diverse communities, languages, generations, and you know, I think I, I've talked to the team and the staff who made the decision around the funding. Um, I think there was uh, a belief that these projects start, complete, stop, start, complete, stop. And that's, okay, honey, I'll be right there. And, and that's not the case here. What's happening is these projects, when we're working across languages, across generations, uh, require an agility, and that's why we're coming back to you, Council, to ask for you to, to reconsider the funding. Where are we, where are we, where are we okay, okay, I'll be right there. Um, and, and this funding is also important because, as you know, the BIAs themselves are, are, are funded by our member businesses. And I don't need to go into detail about you know, the challenges we're facing right now in Strathcona. Um, this kind of project, it feels like extra and just like all the good projects are, it's making a real impact and I just want to see that momentum continue. There are so many stakeholders involved. Council, you will have received five different letters from five community stakeholders supporting this grant and the funding to go towards it. I could keep going on and I hope Tom Wanklin is listening because I know he would be available to answer more questions. He's very familiar with the project as well and, and I'm here to answer more questions too. And again, I'll just close like, look, I, I, know, I know these grants um, are not offered to everyone and that decisions do need to be made. Um, this one's special and I'm asking you to reconsider. Thank you. Thank you. You do have uh, some questions. Uh, Councillor Fry, have up to three minutes. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, thanks, Ms. Lamb and Son for joining us today. Um, so, um, I understand that, that the suggestion may have been that this grant wasn't uh, allocated because the it was contemplated that perhaps the work was not completed in the in the last cycle. Is that your understanding as well? And and where do you think this work could be? Please. The work, the work hasn't been completed, Council Fry, because yes, I'm done. Thanks. Almost um, because uh, because the renovation is about to begin and. We've actually been waiting on city permits 
of which I won't go into the details of maybe how long that took, uh, to do that renovation. So that, that's why it isn't complete. And I just want to emphasize the principle there that if, if that is how we're operating, as I said before, in this stop, go, stop, go uh, manner versus in an agile manner, allowing that project to continue and to grow and to finish while we start these other two new projects, um, we're going to run into problems. I mean, uh, this, is, this is why we have the community momentum right now with all of these stakeholders involved. And um, so it's accurate. No, the, the, the first project isn't done yet because it's city building and it takes a little while. No, I appreciate that. Could you maybe just speak a little bit to, because I, I, I'm familiar with the various societies. I know who's on, on your work team. Uh, what are the, some of the challenges and opportunities working with some of these older societies? Yeah, well, I think there's about 135 across the city of Vancouver. Almost all of them span between Strathcona and Chinatown, so those two BIAs would know the most. Some of these societies are near a century old. Um, their um, membership is... Um, uh, senior, um, and one of the reasons the project came up in the first place is, you know, these societies own their properties. They have aging memberships, uh, deeply passionate about um, their mission and vision and the role they play in our city. And so the idea is like, well, how can we, how, how can we activate those, those spaces, a lot of which have um, ground level community serving retail spaces, perfect for a business and not just any business, but a culturally aligned business. So in Chinatown, working with different community groups, young entrepreneurs who um, want to uphold the values and vision of Chinatown and, and go into those spaces and pay rent it, to those societies directly so that they can replenish you know, their model and put upgrades into their buildings and maintain ownership over their buildings rather than sell those buildings off, which can be repurposed for other you know, uh, reasons, but that aren't always culturally aligned with the community. Right. That's why this project is so juicy. Thanks, we're at the three minutes, but we do have questions from Councillor Dominato. Councillor Dominato, go ahead. Hi, Theo. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to get my head wrapped around because I'm not as familiar with the project. Just um, I had to pull up the report again, and, and the request was for $49,000 in grant, and, and I think you mentioned there had been previously a, a grant provided. Can you just walk me through just sort of what exactly the funds are being used, the ones that were the 2019 grant was used for, and what these would be used for the, the proposed 49000 uh, the 49000 would be used to support um, the next site, uh, which is the site of the Chinese Nationals League um, in Chinatown, and develop the scope of work um, re required to revitalize and um, renovate that space. So, you know, it's not enough. These spaces, Council Dominato, are not walk-in ready. They, um, they are facing, um, you know, decades of neglect, not, not because there isn't the passion and the will, but because of the resources, capital, um, and city support and interest required. And so that's all just aligning right now. And so that $49,000, just as the previous grant was used, is to um, pay for the work to plan, you know, to plan for the use of that space and to move through the requirements to make sure that space is up to grade, um, safe, workable, and um, ready for retail use. Okay, so, so, and I'm just gonna reflect it back and confirm I understood then, is that these are essentially planning dollars, scoping dollars, um, but further work, like more the actual bricks and mortar renovations, capital side, you would still need to obtain, there still need to be some money for that, and would that be a subsequent request at a later date to the city, or through fundraising or other means? Just so I understand. Yeah, probably all of the above. I don't know yet. I know that for this um, project, which is um, again, it's growing in momentum to continue. We're going to need um, way more involvement for community, uh, for in community partners, foundations, funders than just the city of Vancouver alone. Like we need, we're gonna need more help. But once we can get these three examples off the ground, um, the model um, is there, it's, it's now moved out of the pilot phase and, and there's an actual, you know, 
um, example, uh, multiple examples um, of, of the project and the program working. Okay, that's great. Thanks so much. Thanks, uh, Councillor Kirby. I'm up to three minutes. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm just going to follow up a bit on Councillor Dominato's because she touched on my question. I'm just wanting to get my head around sort of specifically the scope of what this grant would cover, and you're, you're saying it would um, help develop a scope of work. Can you speak a little bit, um, give us a little bit of quick background about the Chinese um, National League and the role it plays in the community? And secondly, um, what would the impact of a delay be in not receiving a grant this year if you had to try and apply for next year, for example? Yeah, I mean, so the league um, as a society uh, nurtures nurtures its membership community, which is culturally aligned with the community of Chinatown, um, has historical relevance in the community um, and, and their own mission and vision that is um, historically and values aligned with the community of Chinatown. I, I, I'll be the first to acknowledge this is, this is outside of my district, but the program spans both Chinatown and Strathcona, which is why I am particular passionate and why we are still involved with the um, sponsorship of this project. If the funding doesn't come through, my like I, I'm, I'm giving you the most human answer I have. I, I don't know if it will continue. I, I don't know if we can continue. I don't, I can't tell you right now where that funding will come from. And I'm also the first to acknowledge that that's not a sustainable thing. It's because it's so early. It's so early on right now in this first year of getting this project off its feet, which is why we need the city support. But this is not necessarily something we would expect to be sustained through this means and channel for years to come. We're looking to the city to pilot this, to pilot this very innovative model, like it's unprecedented, um, and get it off the ground. And if we lose that funding right now, um, uh, I don't know, that might be it. That might be it. Okay, and then just a, I, I appreciate the human answer, just a quick clarification question. So it, the reason that Strath Center BIA was the applying organization is because it falls in the boundaries, even though it sort of has very much of a ch Chinatown um, sort of benefit in terms of the legacy of this particular building, is that right? Yes, this particular building is in Chinatown, but the um, the project itself um, was founded uh, with the Strathcona BIA, and we've continued to sponsor it because of the impact to the Strathcona BIA and the Chinatown BIA. Yes, I, I have to be very diligent in thinking about my own district borders, and as you know, when we're in placemaking and city building, we need to sometimes stretch a little further than our own district. Okay, that's my time. Thank you, Theo. I appreciate it. Councilor Dejanova, up to three minutes. Thanks so much. Um, and a lot of my other questions have been answered, but I just wanted to ask um, and to give you give you a chance to explain to me maybe uh, this can't wait until the next granting cycle. Is that correct? That's what I'm hearing from you. That there's a a sense of urgency in this. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. I, I'll just All right. Add and or, do you have concern? Um, Can you speak a little more to that concern? If um, I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to to ask you to look into a crystal ball, but are you concerned that mm -hmm. that there won't be an option in a year from now mm -hmm. when we we're looking at another ground cycle? Yeah, I, I, I definitely took a beat before preparing my remarks thinking and, and working with the team around what can continue uh, with or without the support. I, I absolutely did. Um, we are, we're dealing across cultures. We're dealing with translators. We're working with translators. We're working across generations, especially when you're working with Chinese benevolent societies. We have this moment and this opportunity now to see um, to see, to, you know, to seize the opportunity um, and 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 move forward uh, with the project team we have, with all the people in place, with all the work that has proceeded up to this moment, and to lose it with this one ring in the letter removed. Um, as I said before, I, I, I am concerned it would come toppling down after all this work um, so far. And I'm going to ask our staff this, but I'm and I'm sorry to put you on the hot seat, but I want to ask you this, if it's okay. Uh, if you can't answer it, I understand. But do you think that this would perhaps even have some value to what the city is trying to do 
uh, in preparing uh, to move forward with UNESCO World Heritage uh, site status? Uh, I think that's an excellent question for the Chinatown transformation team, but I can say we have been in um, consistent communication with the Chinatown transformation team um, and their work regarding this. Um, and my, my, again, my own human answer is I think it is absolutely um, beneficial uh, to that work. Um, but I, I think you're right. I think that's an excellent question for staff. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, it definitely has given me uh, some questions for staff after this. Thanks so much. And that's it for questions. Uh, thank you very much for calling in and uh, having your voice heard here on council. Appreciate it, as always. Uh, thanks. And uh, um, clerks, I believe the third speaker, uh, despite being sent two notices, is not uh, not available. Okay. So council, that's it for uh, speakers. We can uh, go on the question queue now for um, uh, questions to staff. Got Councillor Dejanova on. On uh, and you have about five minutes for these questions, so go ahead, Councillor Dejanova. Maybe I don't need to belabor this question. Maybe uh, Mr. Johnston had already heard me ask it, <laughs> that I'd ask it of staff. But I'm just wondering to to the uh, grant application that uh, or sorry the the grant uh, or the consideration of grant uh, within uh, the recommendations here. We don't see it here. Is this significant to, uh, or could it play a part in UNESCO World Heritage um, status, site status, um, as we're in the application process right now? Uh, through the mayor, if I might uh, direct the question to to staff that are more familiar with the particulars of the project. I believe Tom Wanklin's on, or Neil. Yeah, uh, Mr. Mayor, Council, thank you very much, City Manager. Tom Wanklin speaking, Senior Planner for Downtown East Side and Chinatown. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity to respond. Firstly, around the UNESCO site question. Um, indeed, we are very encouraged by this um, project that has been um, a partner to the downtown east side for the last four years. And um, being able to assist the Chinese benevolent societies in to activate their ground floor spaces is part of preparing Chinatown for the World Heritage, UNESCO World, World Heritage Site bid. And um, it is a very important co component of what we are starting to propose, which we would bring to council. We am aiming to bring this to you in January, which is a new uh, special enterprise program that comprise um, three strategies. One is the activation of vacant spaces in the downtown east side. Two is bringing business support to small enterprises and uh, legacy businesses in Chinatown and the downtown east side. And three, this project that the Strathcona BIA has been helping us with in bringing community serving retail to the Chinese societies. Councillor Ishinova. Thanks very much, Mr. Mayor. I'm just I'm trying to write some notes while I I'm thinking about that. So I'm j I'm wondering. I mean, had there been less applications, would this have been something that was considered, or was it not considered for other reasons outside of that? The, because of its merit. We, we fully, um, Mr. Mayor and Council, we fully support the work that Strathcona is doing. We 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 want them to continue. One of the difficulties we have is that this is a matching grant. Um, fund. So it, it works on a single grant basis. And as Theo was explaining, they would be more agile um, if there was a program funding. So what we are preparing is the motivation to bring to council for your consideration is to turn this into part of a program. We're calling it the special enterprise program. And we were hoping to bring their um, grant request plus additional funding request to you in January. Okay, thanks so much. I'll leave it there. 
Thank you. Uh, Councillor Fry, we've got you up to uh, five minutes. Actually, you know what, Mr. Uh, Mayor, I think that uh, Mr. Wanklin kind of answered my questions just there. Um, thanks to Councillor DiGenova. So I'm hopeful to hear about this program coming in January then. Okay. Thanks so much. Uh, Councillor DiGenova, did you have anything else to add here? For question? Uh, I mean, I I do have a, a quick question to to staff is have have I have you reached out and and sort of is there any concern that there's going to be a funding gap until January? If this does come in January, I mean, I know how much work council has put in front of you, and I know that that uh, I'm still waiting for for things to come back from quite some time ago. So appreciate that staff would like to get the, this back to us in January and. That may happen, but I, I'm just wondering if this is in jeopardy in the meantime. Yes, I'm thank you, Councillor. I, I do believe this is a concern that, that Theo is raising, in, in, and she phoned me and we discussed this, uh, and I explained that staff cannot give a guarantee as to the timing of such funding. It is completely dependent upon uh, you know, when, when and if we're given access to bring that forward. But at the moment, we're hoping for January. So I know that this does concern them, um, and you, she explained very well how, how that is likely to affect them. Okay, thanks so much. That's my time for questions to staff. Okay, uh, great, thank you. So council, uh, I don't see any other questions. Can we have somebody move this motion then? Fry. Councillor Kirby Young. Okay, I heard Councillor uh, Councilor Fry, seconded by Councillor Kirby Young, uh, and so any debate and decision around this? I don't see anybody on the queue, so I'm calling a vote now. Councillor Weeb. Oh, Councillor Weeb is, uh, is uh, if you can mark him as a conflict of interest. Um, clerks. Mayor, yeah. this is Councillor Bly. May I get a vote assist in favor? Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. You're back on Councillor Bly. Fine. Uh, thanks. We'll uh, get clerks to mark you in favor. Clerks are still seeing absent. We could have Councillor Bly. Great. Okay. Um, Clerks, I think uh, Councillor Weeb should be marked as, I think he excused himself due to conflict. So I think that's probably what that should show on the screen. Give me a clerk. We're just gonna get the clerk in the chamber to do that. Right, I understand there's a little technical difficulty. Okay, so, um, Okay, Council, we're just waiting for a, a, just to mark Councillor Weave as absent due to conflict. Okay, uh, Council, so that vote has uh, passed with, uh, uh, with none uh, in opposition. Okay, thanks council. We are now uh, almost done here. We're on to members motions and the first motion one is a request for leave of absence. Councilor Dominato for civic business for meetings on Thursday, December 3rd from 2.30 to 8.30. So could somebody move this motion? I'll move Councilor DeGenova. Second, Councilor Carr. Thank you, Councilor Carr. The yeas and nays, all in favor say yay. Yay. Opposed say nay. Don't hear any, that carries unanimously. Thank you. We have under new business, a request for leave of absence. Councillor Bly for Civic Business uh, from Civic uh, from meetings today, October 21st from 2.45 to 4 p.m. Uh, no move, Councillor Carr. Thank you, Seconder. Councillor Boyle. Councillor Boyle, thank you. Yeas and nays, all in favor, yay. Yay. Opposed, nay. Okay, that carries unanimously too. Any other items, uh, Council? Okay, great. So we'll uh, have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Thank you. Seconder? Fry. Thanks. Uh, all in favor say yay. Yay. Opposed say nay. 
Great. Okay, that's great unanimously. Thank you, Council. This meeting is adjourned, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks again, Council. Okay, thank you, folks. Bye-bye. Thanks, all.